Hello, everyone, and welcome to Twilight Epiphanies Talk Radio with Cindy Magnuson, and the show is about to begin. So, slow down, take a seat, put your feet up, and maybe take some notes, because this show is about you, it's for you, and it is designed to help you receive exactly what you need to be a happier and healthier you. Hello, everyone. Good evening and welcome to Twilight Epiphanies Radio, episode 32. So tonight, yours truly, host of Twilight Epiphanies Radio and owner of Sea Source Energy Epiphanies and founder of the Sea Technique EFT Plus, and part of what is in my grouping of what I do uh, under my umbrella of work is numerology readings. So tonight I'm going to be doing uh, two, maybe three. I have three callers on the line. I have already taken two of the individual's information, so I will be able to get quickly into doing these live numerology readings tonight. And uh, just so anyone knows out there, uh, if you're listening in and this is something that you wanted to take part in, but either uh, couldn't be here live or you weren't able to, um, you know, see this in time and get in, or if the readings get got a little bit longer and we weren't able to fit you in. For one thing, I will be doing this type of a show again. Uh, so I'll be probably running this, let's say maybe every two to three months, something like that. So keep watching and following. Uh, Get on my Facebook page, Cindy Magnuson, and you'll be notified as to what shows are coming up. And then I also have posted on my Facebook page a video that is about me doing numerology readings. And if you go on my Facebook page, Cindy Magnuson, and listen to that video, you will learn ways that By sharing that, there are still a few more spots left where you can receive a free 20-minute online reading with me. I will contact you in the month of March and do that numerology reading with you. And there also is an opportunity for a $10 discount by mentioning that video. So that's with any of my services on my page. My website is thecetechnique.com. Okay, so let's get right into numerology readings. Uh, What I'm going to do is pull up, first of all, I am going to not give some of the specific details of people's full name and birth date. I'm going to do the birth date, but I'm not going to do the full name. So we're going to leave people's privacy, um, you know, here while I'm doing the reading, but I'm going to open up the line to the first person here, and this is Gigi. So hello there, Gigi, and welcome. You are now live on Twilight Epiphanies Radio. Hello. Hello. Thank you so much for taking my call. You are welcome. Okay, so uh, what I have done here is pulled up Gigi's information. And so in front of me, I have a number sheet with and what I need in order to do a numerology reading with you would be your full first and last name, even your middle name, as it is on your birth certificate, the common name that you currently introduce yourself as, and then your birth date. So The first thing, Gigi, is that I'm going to look at the five most important numbers in your chart, which are your first five core numbers. The most important number is your life path number. And you have the number one is your life path number. The next number that is significant is the number, the expression number, which comes from your name as it's added up all the way across. That gives us your characteristics. So the life path number, which is a one, is adding your particular birth date together. So you are a one life path, and your expression number, the characteristics that you carry with you while you're walking on that path, is the number three. 
So, okay. Now, I'm sorry, but I think I think maybe the birth date um, there was maybe something misunderstood in the birth date because I know my life path is a two, oh, eleven two. You know what? You know what? Hold on. I wrote down here July seventh, and you it's July seventeenth. That was my very quick right. writing here. So let me go back real quick. This is the wonderful thing about numerology here. We can, hold on now, I'm working a couple different things here at once. Yeah, and it's, yeah. let me, hold on, let me minim, minimize my uh, studio. I'm going to reopen this back up here, create a new report. Okay, it, it is really giving me a hard time with, for some reason, not letting me recreate that. So we're going to go here, here, change. We're going to add the one that I didn't put in there, rushing to get that in, and pull you up again. And yes, indeed, you are a two-life path now. But what I'm going to do now, before I finalize and say that you are a number two life path, I'm going to go back. So when you do a life path number, there are actually three calculations. Has anyone ever told you this before, Gigi? That there are uh, actually three calculations that you can know. do in order to pull up. And I just want to check real quick and see if I do sure. all three, if any of the two changes to an, an 11. Okay, so hold on real quick here. Okay, you sure. actually, now, so for the audience listening, when you do your calculations on different programs online, you will notice that sometimes you come up with a master level energy, and sometimes you come up with just the lower vibration. And their master level energies are 11, 22, and 33. Now, when you add the two ones and the 11 together, that comes up to a two. So in, in a numerology report, if I see that someone has in their life path number, the number two, the number three, or the number two, the number four, or the number six, then I'm going to go back into the program and run that through a couple more of the other potential calculation methods in order to see if you potentially also have a master level vibration underneath your life path number. So there are three ways, A, B, and C. And what it means is that you are adding all the way across, you are adding in three categories of numbers, or you are adding vertically. Now, when you add your birth date together by a different method, which is calculation method number C, enhanced decoses method, which he added in, and that is the reason why, and for the audience to know, when sometimes you see you get your numbers back, it's different from one computer program to another. What I like about Hans Decoz is that his program gives me the opportunity here to do all three calculations, which I would do anyways. So you also can consider yourself the 11 life path, okay? So the 11 life path is a, a master level energy. Are you familiar with the master level energies? Yeah. Okay. So master level frequencies are a more spiritual vibration. So what I tell people is when I see this, what this means is that you are prob you have the opportunity to choose for yourself in this lifetime how you would like to be representing your life path. So you may have found that you tended to vacillate between living up to the higher potential of a master level frequency as opposed to just simply adopting the, what we would call mundane or the lower number. And there's nothing really truly mundane about it in the sense that we think about mundane because two is a very prominent energy. Uh, but you have the choice of which one you would like to. And you probably find, I find that people with these different potentials have a very versatile sense about them as to how they approach life. 
Now, Mm -hmm. the two or the 11 is a life path means that you are meant to master understanding the feminine energy. The feminine energy is a significant, important energy for you. And I'm going to emphasize it even more for you in particular, because you also in your chart, in these, the energies of your birth date, we calculate challenge numbers and your whole life and stage of your life that you're in right now is the two challenge. So that's very interesting. So that means that as I was saying, you might find that you vacillate in living up to the potential of the power in the energy. There is an energy lesson with you in the 11 that's very significant. So you also have what's called the heart's desire number, which is the 11 master level energy. And then mm-hmm. in your in your common name is you introduce yourself your heart's desire is the two energy also so this is a significant energy story that is about you what is the two about the one male energy is the initiator the two energy is the soft round energy it is the partnerships relationships maternal energy it is nurturing compassionate tolerant etc. So this is is saying that you also hear while you're you are walking this 11 life path, the characteristics that you bring with it are the three energy. That's the energy of self expression. It is also what I'm going to say what 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 is coming out to my mind is that it is also the energy of the inner child. And the inner child is specific to you. Now, as I just said that, a wave of energy just flowed across me. Okay, so that tells me that I'm, I am uh, linked up with you a little bit more. I can kind of, you know, feel your vibrational frequencies. And because you also have a three challenge that was in the second time frame of your life, approximate, a second, uh, it's called a pinnacle in your life. And that was approximately between the years of 30 and 40. Uh, Self-criticism and from childhood and the a mater, a maternal relationship around you, authority figure, there has been a challenge with you and those energies in some kind of an energy story. So there's a pattern in there. And I would say that definitely there may have been a criticizing factor around you that made it difficult for you to believe in yourself. But you, you at the same time have a very strong inner child in you and you have resonated a lot in your life with part of our challenges in childhood bring us to a protection mechanism that ends up becoming our greater skills. You have a strong capacity to relate to children and to resonate with a lot of their energy. So you may have even Mm -hmm. found yourself in working around them. So uh those two together and the 11 as far as being your life path number is an energy that says that we your our the developments of an 11 take more time so in general with the two challenge and the a sensitivity and you were you were have the seven month for a birth date that emphasizes your nervous system's sensitivity. So you tend to have a more uh, ener- a, a more uh, sensitive nervous system that is more like an antenna that picks up other people's feelings, and that has made it a little bit more difficult at times for you to relate 
in certain situations where you would probably generally tend to try and shy away from. So, um, okay, how are we doing so far? Okay, so the, so so far this is you can relate to what I'm saying. Yes, it's definitely okay, on very, point, and I can relate. Okay, very good. And and again, we do not have to do specifics. Um, okay, I can okay I can understand. So, um, what what happens when I'm doing readings with people is that. Um, once I start to see the vibrational frequencies here on paper and there's a linear meaning behind them, then behind, behind that, I'm going to be reading intuitively from what's in here. So it leads me in and then I become linked in a little bit. So when I'm linking in with your, your energetic system, Gigi, and I do want to say that the number seven is very prominent around you and you've kept that seven in close to you now the seven generally is an introverted energy it's the energy of study it's the energy of uh, the seeker someone who really likes to figure things out and in your energy field i can feel that the inner child within you still has memories of secrets that were kept when you were a child. And those secrets are still in there and they're very strong. And, and that inner child, actually, as I said that, there's, there's a little bit of kind of a weight coming off of your chest at this time, which kind of feels a little bit good to have that kind of come up and be open like that inner child gets a little bit of relief because that inner child can be seen so there has been um a holding back of uh, a little bit of some of these secrets and maybe part of the 11 energy then that is why you have a two um life path and you also have the 11 is the process of you going in and and really working into the deeper stages of healing childhood experiences that you maybe might have only had bits and pieces of. Um, I kind of have a feeling that, you know, there's, there's enough awareness there of what went on, but I think a lot of also went on is maybe such at younger stages that it was a little bit, um, more difficult for you to fully remember. Does that make sense? Exactly. Okay. Totally. Okay. So, and basically, um, because of that being um, repressed like that, there is a little bit of fear of going into those spaces because as you get closer and you start to feel the um, fear and the powerlessness that the inner child was feeling at that time. And, but I do feel like you are ready to move forward more with that. And even part of, you know, you even being online and open and allowing your energy field here, which, you know, we are are totally protected here. This is um, a sacred space between you and me and listeners are learning. And I will tell you that people with similar energies and, and energetic spaces can learn also on their own in their own spaces because it will as we are are in that precious little space there where the inner child goes into the recesses and is afraid to come forward, well, once that child feels a little bit safer to come out, this is where then the other people can feel that safety also. So this is a very safe circle. That child is safe. And we want to say to that child here that those situations are no longer here. Now, in your name change, there is, um, so I'm taking that, that was a married name. Uh, are you still yeah. married to the same person? No. Okay. No. So because the energy 
expression number that that married name gave you carried some of the frequencies of those inner child experiences. So there was a a little bit of a vibrational frequency in there. And um, uh, in, in that time, so there's a pattern now The energy number that your expression is for your married name is a karmic number called the 14-5. And it generally is expressing you at that time. So there may have been an escapism that you went into a little bit during that period of time when you picked up your married name, which is the common name that you gave me right now. So there's a little Mm -hmm. bit of a coping mechanism in some type of escapism. Okay. So the the would it be better to use my birth, my first name, my birth first name? Uh, the the birth name is a stronger first name for you. Well, it's a stronger full name. Accept that. I do not have currently in front of me the calculation for Gigi in your your birth name. So what would take place is I would have to do a couple more calculations. Um, what I'd like to do is take a look at the current time frame that you're under right now, because um, I'll have to be um, ending up here in a little bit. But you are currently, oh, in see this beauty of this. This, this is how this works, okay? So I, I hadn't looked yet at the current time frame you're in, but the feeling, the energetic feeling that I felt was when I felt that inner child open up and say, yes, I'm in here, you know, and what was happening is I was communicating with you with my voice was even a little more challenged. And this is where that inner, inner child's voice was suppressed. So you are ready very much so to heal on a higher level. You are currently in a personal year that's a nine personal year. And this is a time frame of completion. And you are under what's called the essence number of the number one. And your personality is the number one. So in spite of this particular challenge space, you have a very strong, independent personality, and you you built that for yourself. So you definitely know how to carry yourself through in life and move to where you need to move to. You are also under, on the spiritual plane, the letter V of your last name, excuse me, so you, your, your birth last name, which is a 22 energy on the spiritual plane. So for these last four years, 2019 being the fourth year of it, you have specifically been more focused on, especially more in the last two years, um, you know, like from the, the last two, 60 to 61 here, you have been particularly working with healing of this inner space. Uh, relationships, love has been a primary focus. And you have very strong spiritual guidance around you with that 22. So for the last four years, and I would say at age 57, uh, that's when you had a bigger epiphany. You made a bigger move in in relation to looking at love and how you feel per balance, loving yourself, Mm -hmm. loving others, Mm -hmm. allowing love in your life, accepting love. And you have had this letter 22 then around you, which represents an energy of strong spiritual guidance around you. So you, mm-hmm. you came in with this. You, you have had this very close to you. So, you're, again, you're very highly intuitive. So as you round up in 2019 here, you are finishing something and you are starting to this new phase. Next year, 2020, is going to be a one personal year, and you go under what's called a six essence number. So even though it's going to be something that you're still going to continue to work with to a certain degree, 
you have a very strong opportunity to move forward and make some good changes in this healing capacity, especially over the next four years up until 2023. Okay, and I'm, I'm going to say that that is very significant for you. The more that you put forward your effort to do some really strong healing over the next, you know, this year, finishing up your clearing house this year. Okay, it's not going to always be easy this year, but you're going to have that personality, that drive motivation that you have to keep you going. So keep it up. And you're going to do a great job of clearing, and you definitely have love coming up, stronger love, and however it is, whether it's self-love, healing, even career emphasis, very good, very good energies coming up. At, um, and it's going to be a little bit easier starting in 2020 through 2024. Okay. Oh, so in other words, when you say love coming up and career, are you talking about this year or now? I would. I would say that you are mulling, you are in a situation right now where you are under completing certain phases of something, but you're also starting something new. So you're kind of in a 50-50. You're going to find that mm. things are going to, you, your focus has been on love for the last couple of years, love, career, relationship, business, those kind of go together. Um, they're, they're, they're projects that you're working on and you're going to find it solidified a little bit more and starting off on a little bit greater emphasis as 2020 comes around. Oh, okay. Cause I was hoping to move into uh, a new career that was, is more aligned with my, who I am, my destiny. My um, you're completely open for it. Allow yeah. it. Allow it and let it come. I allow this new adventure, this new opportunity, and in allowing, I allow my inner child to know that I am here with her, that she is safe, and that I am merging her back into my heart where she belongs, and her creativity and self-expression and voice is ready to be heard, and I allow the universe to put me in alignment with what is the best opportunity and place for me, so be it. Mm-hmm. Yes, that feels really good. Thank you. You are welcome. Okay, Gigi, I'm going to close off the line and um, go on to the next person. And thank you so much for being with me. Yes, thank you. Namaste. Okay, namaste to you also. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, and the next I am going to be opening up a caller with area code 865 on the line, 865, and then also uh, area code 805. I was trying to connect with you earlier and uh, get your information, but uh, I will be doing your numerology reading if that's what you would like to have done uh, next after I open up this caller here. So I'm going to welcome on Linda, actually Lynn. Hello, Lynn. Hi. Yes, it's Lynn. Hi. Thank yes. you so yes. much, Cindy. Okay. Thank you. you. Are... And it's, uh, it's a 1556. Okay, 151956. Yes, ma'am. We will. I, and I, I have to always look at it and make sure we've got it right before we begin here. So let me go back in. Uh, Hold on. I'm going to minimize and pull up your information. Thank you. Okay. This is the first time I'm using my uh, numerology program here in this. So we have a J. While I'm also on the air on the same computer. So it's uh, it's working pretty good. I'm liking it. (laughs) All right. So... (laughs) Uh, I'm going to double check the name here, uh, and it looks like everything is good. One five nineteen fifty six. Okay, and here we go. Pull up. Okay, okay. so I, okay. I am looking at this for the first time here. Okay, here we go. Well, this is certainly about. This is an inner child evening, that's for sure. So far here, we have lots <laughs> of lots of this two two energy challenges here. 
so. I, and and, mm-hmm. and uh, that's, that's a very strong theme for me. So very good. Okay, well, so your first of all number that is uh, the most prominent number in your chart, you are a nine life path. And your expression number, which is the characteristics that you carry with you as you walk this path of the nine, which which is completely over your entire chart here. This nine energy is what you're meant to master in this lifetime. It was your primary focus for being here in this, this incarnation. And then everything else kind of falls into little pieces here about that nine energy. But kind of how we look at it is that your life path number, which is your birth date added up is actually the the most important but it's equal in vibrational frequency to your characteristics which is your your full birth name is added up across each letter of your name is assigned a number a is one b is two c is three all the double digit numbers are knocked down to a single digit and it's added across and it comes up with your characteristics and you are the eight energy so you The nine is about completion. The nine is actually a generally thought of as a fortunate lifetime. So it's a lifetime when you have the opportunity to receive back from good deeds that you've done. And sometimes uh, in that lifetime, you just had uh, money come to you, you know, some great opportunity um, fell in in line for you just out of the blue. So it's a lifetime Mm -hmm. when we are not exactly like reaping what we sow, but it's where karmic, karmic destinies bring us in line with some of our very good um, karma that we've had. So what you are completing then we will look at the other numbers that fill in here. Now, the eight as an expression means that you have a tendency to be more, it would either be business-like or um, material plane oriented, uh, material acquisition oriented, a CEO, a business owner, and it also has to do with the physical aspect of ourselves. So it also has to do with health. So the eight energy as a characteristic likes to be in charge. And I'm going to emphasize you very much enjoying being in charge. And like the eights in general like to own companies. They um, you know like to be someone who is the boss over others. And I'm saying this in a very good way because, <laughs> it mean, and, and it is a good thing, it means that you came in to this incarnation with those characteristics that you're good at that. And you are good at that. So, and I'm emphasizing it because your your common name also adds up to an eight. So it's so meaningful to you that you even even on a subconscious level attuned yourself to to liking how you spell your shortened name, you know, Lynn, uh, into it's still adding up to an eight energy. Isn't that fascinating? <laughs> yes. And it is. <laughs> and then what I'm seeing here in your birth name is that your whole first name, what sticks out, adds up to a 22. Your middle name adds up to a 22. Those are subcomponents. Your last name adds up to a nine. So what that means there is that you have a very strong ideology to be connected with very large enterprises, generally, you would always want to be moving towards working with large organizations, no matter what that was. You know, 22, we look at that as generally a spiritual energy, and now it's a subcomponent. But what I'm, the reason I'm emphasizing it is because all of the eight energy in here in the 22s, it gives, it, it stuck out. You know, I said, okay, that's a part that's important here. So 
those energies are generally thought of and looked at as being spiritual. And now that doesn't mean that anyone's just using them spiritual, but it's thought of generally as bringing spiritual concepts into the physical plane. And the 22 also is a number of a lot of politicians. So we have to understand that when we're saying that some is a spiritual number, I want the audience to understand too um, that you know there's a lot of politicians there and they're very far from being good spiritual people in some cases. <laughs> so the, the 22 energy carries with it a drive within you. One, it says that you've had experiences in past lives around larger corporations I'm going to even say that the the p- political arena in general has an interest in you, or it may be yes. even with some with something that was in your family line. So politics yes. uh, in your family line, okay, or um, you know, an interest with you is something that you gravitate towards. So the justice system. Um, how it is run, the legal system is very significant to you. The idea, yeah. the feeling. Okay, so so and and so you have a, a resonance of a lawyer around you. That type of an energy yeah. feel. <laughs> okay, okay, very good. So we're in the ballpark there. Okay, so uh, uh, also then here now you have two interesting numbers in your. Uh, heart's desire number and your personality number now uh, age wise uh, okay so age wise you are in in my age category here Uh, us three ladies here so far are are right in our (laughs) beginning beginning 60s here and (laughs) and and as we look as we're in this place the energies that we started off with have been transmuted into their their uh, corrected places so you came in under a vibration carrying a testing vibration so in you in regarding looking even at politics when you're going to view it you have an acute eye for what is being done correct and what is not being done moral and ethically. And that the a decision has been within you as to how you're going to move through this plane specifically with that observation. It's sort of in your heart's desire number, you have a testing vibration as to how you have proceeded in younger years for excuse me, how you were going to use your particular amount of authority energy within you. In younger years, you probably had a tendency because you have a fine, refined, and higher intellect, you probably had difficulty taking advice from other people and probably learned along the way that it would be, um, you know, optimal for you to be more uh, open to some suggestions. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Yes. Okay. So your um, challenge that is your main life challenge and the other two challenges that are, uh, uh, that have been in your life recently is, is just the two challenge. And Fortunately, in your shortened name, you did take on the two energy as your heart's desire. And that's part of why I've said that I already felt like you have softened a lot of that edge that you came in with earlier. So, yes. which is very good yes. because you, you corrected yourself. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, you literally. If you wanted to sit down and, you know, amass making a great deal of money, I don't think it would be very difficult for you at all to do. I think you have the capacity to say, this is what I'm going to do and that's what I'm going to do and it's going to be this easy. You have mastered those particular frequencies. 
But this lifetime is about not just doing that. This lifetime is about you wanting to apply it to be something significant for the world because the nine is the humanitarian. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's right. Yeah. Okay, very good. So you've been on this humanitarian um, mm-hmm. energy and your shortened name fits so perfect. You have the six as your personality number, which is love. You present to the world is the soft shoulder for someone to listen to. Um, so that even means that there's a lot of counselor and therapist within you. So you yes. you'd have a lot. Okay, very good. So you are the energy that someone can sit in the presence of and know they are safe because you are truly going to listen to them. Very good. And wow. Uh, okay, good. So you are currently in uh also, this is so fascinating because you are also in a nine personal year. So you are in a completion personal year where that means that over the last eight years, you have you are now at a point in 2019 where you are completing something. Actually, this is a very good time frame from you. This is a time frame that increases your self-expression, especially on the mental plane. Maybe possibly that you're thinking about writing because you have very strong writing abilities also. So uh, strong communication on the mental plane, and that's going to continue your heightened ability for self-expression, um, getting your voice out is what you are working on solidifying kind of over the last um, two years previous to this, you've been maybe working on that. Now there's, there's two references around you. There's family stuff going on with Mm -hmm. maybe something with children, maybe, but then there's also, okay. There's also you working with your self-expression. So there's two different events. There's a business event for you opportunity, but there's also maybe is it grandbabies around, some close children around, something like that, or family, whatever it is. There's yeah, there's okay, okay. So kind of like that place where we have those 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 two different um, you know modes that we are in. and that is kind of maybe part of your heart's desire um, challenge is yeah. which, which way do I go with that? Do I, again, that, that is where you at. So I think you know those two different decision points. Um, I know that you will choose very well. And, and in your choices, um, both, I, I'm voting for equal for each one. <laughs> Um, and I, I yes. think if that's possible, and I kind of like to say there's a solution for everything. So when we say that, that there's a solution for everything and we let go of the apprehensions that we have about um, moving into this space where we're somewhat slightly torn between where we should put our time because there are needs there. Um, I kind of like to say I'm going to allow this higher part of myself to connect in and simply let it unfold. And as it unfolds, it's going to present both opportunities for you, high creativity, both opportunities, and uh, the inspiration. Um, I'm not sure what the creative aspect is in you, um, what creative aspect it is. You receive words very easily. So you being able to express yourself in words, uh, whatever project you're putting into, uh, especially between the years of ages 66 to 68, you will see that blossom a great deal. Wow. Wow. I love it. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank oh, you, you so much. Oh, you are welcome. You are mm-hmm. very welcome. And uh, to I do want to say that anyone receiving a reading here online tonight with me, uh, private message me or, as I said earlier, um, or email me at the ctechnique at gmail.com. And I will email you 
25 page report that gives you the computerized data. The computerized data, and so with everybody on the line who's listening, um, gives you just one number at a time. So it, it doesn't have the ability to one intuit and see how you've transitioned through time and already, already have come out of some of these lessons and ad adopted and what currently how you are utilizing these specific energies. But it's a great way to learn the basics. So um, do you by any chance have um, a question before we summarize up here? I do. Thank you so much, Cindy. Um, do you, what do you see as far as money, money increasing and um, finances uh, coming in more? And a certain time frame? Uh, yes, or within the, yes, if, if possible, yes. Um, yeah. You're waiting, <laughs> you're waiting for yes. something to happen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and it's uh, is it before the end of the year? Oh yes. 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 Okay. Um. All right. I'm gonna quiet myself a little bit. Okay. Um. I'm getting a positive feeling about what you are expecting. Um. There is a a a little notation in there that uh, what comes to mind is it's about three quarters of what you were expecting. So there's about okay. a three, three quarters of it, um, but that's going to keep you in a high drive place. And that's yes. kind of yes. a good, a good thing. And the high drive is part of your lessons here, because as I said, what I see on paper here you have the full capacities here. Um, now, yeah. there's what I'm hearing is what's key factor is break down the barriers uh, that you have experienced past experiences with partnerships or relationships with work that are having a tendency to for you to format how you feel about moving into this new space. So okay. uh, you want to break down the old formatting of how you are observing this situation because it's being okay. framed a little bit by the past and the softer, in a sense, that you are moving into this, the better it's mm -hmm. going to be for you. And by that, I mean... Um, oh, I know. Okay, so yeah. partnerships I know. relate. <laughs> yeah, okay, you're right. they're, okay, great. They're significant for you right now. They're significant, and it's going to bring you, um, especially the energetic experiences and then the security. Because it's there, awesome. you have it. It's okay. Okay. Well, very good. Thank you so much, awesome. Lynn. Thank you so much. Just awesome. Oh, my gosh. Okay. You're amazing. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. All righty. Um, we will talk with you later then. Bye-bye now. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. And let me see here. Make sure I do this the right way here. We will put this on mute. And so we have, I am going to open up to caller number 805 here and see if you are here. Hello, Hi, area Cindy. Hello, Sorry Howard. About that. When you, good, when you had called, I had just stepped away for a minute. Oh, oh okay, no problem at all. Now, um, are you interested in doing a numerology reading? Yes, please. Okay, and are you comfortable with giving your information? Yes. On, yes. Okay, on the air. Okay, so let me then pull up my uh, open box here. Hold on. Uh, all right, stay there. <laughs> Bear with me moving through here. Okay, uh -huh. and so your first name as it was spelled exactly on your birth certificate. Okay. Um, Donna, D-O-N-N-A. 
my middle name Mary, M-A-R-Y, and my last name H-E-A-T-H. Okay. And the current name that you introduce yourself as right now? Donna. Okay. And the last name? Same. The same, H E A T H. Okay, and then yes. your date of date of birth. Four twenty two, nineteen fifty four. Okay, and pulling this up, four twenty two. Look at all that four energy. Lots of fours. <laughs> Okay, so right away, born on the 22nd. Um, have you ever had a numerology reading done before, Donna? No, Cindy. Was that a yes? Um, no, I haven't. No, okay. So just so that I, um, when I'm telling you, I, I will, um, you know, be aware that this is your first time. Because I was going to say, do you know that you're born on the 22nd and that's a master level energy? So we'll get to that and explain that to you. Okay. So the first thing that is prominent is in your chart is that a great deal of your energy centers around the three energy. That is highly significant. You both have the three as your only and prominent challenge in your life while you have a three expression number, meaning that your entire name added all the way across when it gets assigned number values adds up to a three. You have also then a heart's desire that's a three. Your first name alone adds up to a three. Your second, your middle name adds up to a three and your maturity number is a three. That's a lot. Okay. Wow. So three, three is the energy of self-expression, creativity, joy, lightness, social activities. So uh, that coupled here with all of this says that you have a very active mind for communication and your mind is always going, always going, always going. So there's been a lot of inner dialogue that comes here. Now, the other significant point about your chart is that your life path number is the nine also. So you, again, are here, like our last caller, to complete a lesson here. While you also have your personality as the number nine. So out of your first five core numbers, Two of them are the number three. Two of them are the number nine. And then you have the 22 day that you're born on. So that's a lot of self-create. That's a lot of creative energy and a lot of the three which references as I said, I'm picking up mostly inner dialogue. Um, let me look at a couple more things here. You still carry the dine in your common name, which is your expression number, also the nine. So that's also very significant. And then the 19 one, okay. So what's happening, what I'm experiencing here is there is less of significant factors for me to generally see a pattern that's popping right out. Um, So this is going to take me a little bit more time here. Okay. All right. What I'm going to do 
Um, now, in order, to, what's happening here is that some people's energy fields for me to read are very open. Other people's energy fields are a little bit more hesitant. And so I'm not really getting a big hit on how these energies have expressed within you. So what I can say is that there's a big conflict with an inner child space within you that you are here in this lifetime to definitely complete off in a sense there's a feel of almost in your lifetime there's been a need for you to adopt an external persona that is actually pretty different than the true inner world that you otherwise are occupying. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that makes sense. Yeah, and I had a very tough childhood too. Yeah, growing up and all was hard. Okay. And so there is a really, really... Okay. All right. It's slowly starting, slowly starting to come in. Okay. All right. Well, all right. So with that, I was just able now to tune in and what the feelings that I'm getting, because I was able to buy that statement, reach that inner child space, the, the three is definitely an inner child space. No matter what it is, when you bring the male energy, which is the one, the two energy, which is the feminine together, it creates three, the inner child. And with this much, this has, when someone has this much energy, there's a big, big split. So in a sense, your experiences as a child exposed you to energy fields, whoever it was around you that was bringing the challenge in had a very dark entity attachment to them. That, mm. ener- that energy is, has tended to be around you in a way that's always attempting to silence you. It's, a, it's attempting with a fear space to keep you from, from expanding yourself into your full, true potential and self. So it, it has, has through your lifetime been almost in a sense a bit of a threat. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, and the threat generally in now, there is a past life situation with these frequencies for you. And your challenge has been to come on a general energy picture. Your challenges have been for you to break out of the fear and repression of these energies that have held your full capacity back because within you is, is literally you have been in another lifetime place and you carry with you frequencies connected to that you have been near to a creative genius level and an artistic sense somehow. And yeah. those, those frequencies are, have been attempting to block what you have been able to bring through. I'm not picking up yet how far you've been able to break out because 
literally that energy that's been attempting to be around you was trying to keep me from getting in the door and, and feel this. But with these threes and these nines, and then you having this inner child space of, you know, uh, being fearfully uh, acted upon to keep you from fully expressing in a sense. So um, I would say definitely also, okay, more, or a little bit more coming in. You do have um, guides and energies that were with you as a child. You may have brief yeah. memories of communicating with those energies, um, hyperdimensional inner, but it's a benevolent source around you, guides around you, whatever term you want to put those in. And um, that's always been with you. But nonetheless, also, too, you have this other force that you were exposed, exposed to. And that has I attempted. Talk, I talk to them. Oh, Cindy, I talk to them now. I've even seen okay. my guides. I, I, can, okay. I can hear people from the other side. I can, I'm kind of a medium. I can hear my nephew, my mother. And yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now it's making more <laughs> sense. Okay. That was all. So hence, all of the communication and the high level skills and the, the genius level skills. Okay. Very good. And the 22 is a high level spiritual self. And yet somehow along the line, um, there's been that maybe even it's a dogmatic um, emphasis that's tried to keep you from fully feeling comfortable with your skills. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm in a little group now learning more how to facilitate, you know, so I can give little readings and all. And I have a lot of spiritual uh, experiences in my life where I feel such sacredness and holiness and I'll, I'll walk the beach and I'll drop to my knees because I'm feeling this holiness and sacredness and oh my gosh I'll go through the day sometimes I'll love everybody it's just you know it's just incredible you know and I had a, a thing with God once where God came to me and I mean it was the most beautiful experience I ever had I went in the tunnel and you know oh it was amazing Okay, very good. So hence, yes, so all of these threes is all of the different communication around you also. Um, and you are currently in, uh, so underneath this time frame, um, 2019 is a two-personal year for you. And you are in what's called a 16-7 essence number. So while you are in what is referenced as a one, which is also actually a 19 one, which is a karmic number, the year that you were born in 1954 is called a 19 one. And it has what's called a karmic reference. So you very much are in which I'm seeing now, which reflects why I was saying that you are still in a process of um, breaking out of, you know, that old dogma space and the past experiences that kept you from feeling a comfort zone. That's exactly what these two karmic energies around you currently represent. It represents you utilizing your strength right now and you are under two very strong grounding energies on the physical plane you're under the letter d and on the mental plane you're on the letter m of your name both of those are four inch energies and coupled with the eight which is the eight letter in the spiritual plane that you're in you're under these energies uh from 2018, which was a one personal year, you're going to be in this until uh, nearly the end then of uh, 2020. And it's a very powerful, stable, grounded, elemental time for you to utilize the energies of the universe to absolutely break out of these old patterns. 
th this is a finalization for you in these three years to complete this uh, experiences from the past to break out of those oppressive energies that were over you in other lifetimes and in childhood and completely release yourself. And you will go through a very significant change then as you come closer to your birthday at age 67 in uh, the year 2021, very um, prominent, significant changes for you, another level of a big mental breakthrough for you. So it, even more freeing of your mind. So, yes, very good. Oh, that's excellent. Wow. <laughs> that, okay. that, that's incredible. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I do feel like I'm, there, it's very oppressive and, yeah, and for something. And in this life, ah. I haven't had too much money. That's for sure. I haven't had a lot of money or anything. But, you know, I have had opportunities where I've traveled the world and done things. And I wanted to know, is there – I've never been married, and I would love to be married. I think I would. Um, do you see a relationship for me with a man? Because uh -huh. I, I'm, all well, alone. I'm all alone. Uh, I have no kids or anything. Okay. That energy was coming coming through in the beginning. They're very strong. Um, and, again, yes, it's, it's that last lifetime. I'm going to say um, – what I'm feeling about, yeah, a past life situation, and as you expressed in the situation when I was saying that there was some kind of a dogmatic rule over you. Yes, um, and that, yes. And in, in that past life as a nun, you suffered very heavily in that lifetime. So that, there was a lot of scapegoating that was done on the nuns and in these uh, cloistered nun, nun convents. And um, you have a very strong feel of having gone through situations like that. So there's been this mix of this, you know, um, confused spiritual sense between the different forces, you know, of, you know, seeing the abuse of forces by people who were supposed to be um, in religious good places but abusing so you've mm -hmm. seen those abuses you've been on the receiving end of those and that has set up a pattern of childhood kind of carried through with some of those energies so you are in the process yeah. of yeah of completing that and yeah. breaking out of that in this lifetime and that's that heavy you know feeling around it because there is so much spirit around you but spirit is spirit there's good spirit and bad spirit you definitely right. have that strong connection but there's been a confusion over being able to um you know settle into who you feel you're connecting to at times and talking to um you know because you have such a strong sense for that other energy and then in childhood there was a lot of uh self there was you've adopted more self-criticism because of the heavy criticism that was around you yeah and absolutely. so yeah, so breaking out of that. But yes, um, I'm happy to say that when I said there's a big breakthrough now, I don't, I don't prefer, and I, it's not something that I, I seek to receive are absolutes. I don't tell people what's going to happen. I will tell you specifically that yes, you have the letter O coming up at age 67. 2021 there on the physical plane and underneath that particular year the essence number is the six so and this is it i will say that part of you going through these what are called the 16 7 essences is that you want to break out of the shell of keeping yourself out of relationships so yes you have a strong potential for love coming and also a lot of travel after that also. So, <gasps> yeah. So there's really oh, nice, there's really nice energies there. There's, there's variety and change and newness coming. It will, however, and now I'm going to tell you, it's an opportunity and it is a potential and it will take you continuing to do this slowly structured work as you're doing it and breaking yourself out of those 
old fear patterns and vows that you took from the past. So I allow myself to release the patterns of limiting belief systems from any past dimensional space that restricted truths to live by. I allow love, joy, and happiness into my life on all levels of reality. I am love. I am joy. I am peace. I am serenity. I am happy in love. I love myself first. I am a good person. Amen. Oh, that's that's lovely. Amen. Yeah. Oh, um, you're you're phenomenal. I don't know how you know all this stuff, but it it totally resonates with me. And yeah, I think that a lot of the things that happened to me in the past life carried through into this life. Even yeah, definitely. But I've always had you know with you know I've had a lot of bad experiences happen and different things and I've had a rough childhood and all, but I've always had the hope and the love of God. And it's just, I mean, I think that that's given me such strength. And I think that's because of the dogmatic life it carried forth into this life. Okay. Yes. And so there is a good aspect of that. Yes. It's just the, yes, the wrongful parts of the dogma is what the, were the bad parts, but yes, indeed. Good. Very good. Yeah, I think you're doing a great job, and um, you are right in alignment. Um, yeah. So, and and I believe when I'm looking at a numerology reading here, in my opinion, and I tend to read differently than some of the uh, numerologists do, and maybe even sort of astrology does in a sense. I believe that these energies are all here because they come from past decisions. And especially when I see someone with so much nine energy and you are meaning to complete this three energy, especially here, um, you want this three energy to come forth. You want your true voice to be heard, your true self to be here with you and open and allowed and, you know, so that you can feel that light, joy, social, happy, you know, childlike feeling again. That's what you're great at. And so if you came here and picked up again in those places where you were traumatized and parts of yourself were stuck mm-hmm. in unresolved mm-hmm. spaces, we we pick the energy vibrations up again in our experiences here and their opportunities to clear them while we are in this great time frame to clear these past unfinished business places. So properly grieve for the past and then properly move forward into the present. And we can do that with some of that verbology that I was using that we are choosing to be in the here and now, and we allow, by visiting the resonance of the past in those similar experiences that were created, you have the opportunity to clear them differently this time. So you're doing yes. a very great job. You have the 22 energy upcoming, um, you know, in the future at age 73 to 76, and it all looks very bright and happy. Yes. Oh, oh that's wonderful. You know, um, t- Saturday I'm doing a workshop with the Course of Miracles, and they're going to talk about the non-ego, and they're going to talk about forgiving, and so I'm always learning, and yeah. Good. Oh, there you go. And you so you have a little bit more details to bring and keep that resonance in there and further clear your field. So yes, I forgive those individuals in the past who were unable to be healed enough to keep themselves from acting as they did. I can mm-hmm. give understanding to their weakness. Uh, I have boundaries to no longer accept those type of experiences into my life. I allow true love as I love myself first. 
Mm, that's beautiful. Wow, there's so much forgiving in that and so much understanding. And, yeah, that's lovely. Yeah. Very, nice very boundaries. good. And Thank that you. is yeah. – you are welcome, yes. So for everyone listening, uh, what I do is when I am doing the numerology charts and we find an energy story in here, I always work to take that energy through to some clearing and offering you a tool of ener- energy. So we use these words sometimes to reach those spaces. And then energetically, I start to feel your energy field. And I could kind of like work from those cues that I'm feeling then. So we and it and once we uh, use the terms, I allow, it sort of takes off the pressure that we have to know everything, we can just simply engage and allow the universal energies, whether we want to say God, Father, Mother, Gaia, Sophia, whatever it is, to support us in our journey and and move us through in synchronistic flow so that we achieve the greatest healing and our destiny and purpose in this lifetime. So be it. And we oh, let it lovely. go. Yes. Wow. What is your What is your email? Because I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, uh, email you for that for that 25 page thing that you did said or something. Absolutely. Oh. My uh huh. My email address is the C Technique T H E S E E Technique at Gmail dot com. At Gmail. So it's Z as in zebra C? Um, no, uh, the, the C technique at gmail.com. Oh, and you know what? T E C H N I Q U E. Yes. And, e, and C, C is S E E. At Gmail. Huh? Gmail, gmail.com, yes. Mm-hmm. And you can okay, find me online. Technique. Mm -hmm. You can find me online under Cindy Magnuson, private message me. Uh, You could go to my YouTube channel at Cindy Magnuson. There's a link to my um, website, which is thectechnique.com. You can reach me there. So trust me, you will find me. Otherwise, I'll reach out to you and find you somewhere online here and make sure that I get that to you. How do you you spell your last name, Cindy? It's Magnuson, M A G. N U S O N. Okay, Magnuson. Perfect. Yeah, I'd like my sister to have this done. She's kind of, she's been divorced now for 10 years, but she's spending 10 years trying to find herself. I guess that's oh, okay, right? It is you know okay. I mean? and, and definitely. And uh, I have a video on my. Um, Facebook page right now and I announced on there that anyone mentioning that they watched that video or they got referred to somehow just mention a $10 discount and uh, you'll find all the prices on my page but anything $60 and up is $10 off just by mentioning that you either listened to the show or got referred or saw the video that I posted on my numerology readings oh excellent Well, okay yeah. Yes, okay. very good. Yes, yeah, let make so sure helpful. she says. Okay, I am so very glad. Thank you. Thank you make so sure much. I'll say, oh. she was re- I'll say she was referred. Yeah. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> very good. Thank okay. you. Yes, it's so helpful. Thank you very much. Okay. I really appreciate you. it. All right. Bye bye, Donna. Bye. Okay, uh, now I also do have a caller area code 804. I'm going to open up the line and see if you are interested in a reading. There is time for one more. Hello there, area code 804. This is Cindy. Who am I talking to? Hi, uh, Cindy. Thank you for taking my call. My name is Hugh. I'm calling from Virginia. and You need my date of birth and the time and the location. Yes. Okay. I don't need the time, but hold on here, Hugh. Let me pull up my computer program again and open up. Okay. And so, 
starting with your birth name, what is your first name that was on your birth certificate? Hugh, H-U-G-H. Okay, and then a middle name? Well, I chose a, a middle name when I was confirmed, and I used that uh, since confirmation, but I, it wasn't on my birth certificate. Okay, then we will skip that because we just leave it blank if it wasn't on the um, birth name. So the, for the listening audience, we generally don't use uh, confirmation names or uh, jun- sometimes juniors and seniors can be in there, but generally not. And uh, we don't do, uh, you know, the confirmation or the um, baptism name, stuff like that. So what is your last name then? The last name is uh, Trollson. It begins with a T like Tom, then R-A-U-L-S-E-N like Nancy. Okay. Trollson, T-R-A-U-L-S-E-N. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Uh-huh. And then common name is the same, T-R-A-U-L-S-E-N. And your birth date? September 22nd, 1944. Oh, boy, we got all these nines and 22s here. Holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay, Hugh. I'm just double-checking my spelling, my eyes, to look at these little tiny spaces. Okay, so I'm going to do two things here. Hold on one second. Uh Uh-huh. Because your birth date might also be a 22. Hold on. Let me double-check. I'm going to do one more calculation to see what kind of a four you have. Okay, so... Your birth date uh, is either going to add up to a 4 or a 22-4. Now, a 22-4 is also a 4, but when I was referencing that it might be just a regular 4, it means that it may have come from a 31 or a 13. But calculation B brings you to a 22 Life path, if you are, if you have chosen thus far, to vibrate at this higher frequency of this energy that it's about the 22. So a little bit about master level energies. We have one through nine that numerology recognizes, and then there are the master level frequencies of 11, 22, and 33. And those are double digits that we generally keep as a double digit. And it means that it has a stronger reference to a certain amount of spiritual development. The 11 is when someone is just coming into their spiritual awareness and their awakening. And they have a a keener sense of understanding that they are as much spirit here as physical plane here and that that comes with a certain degree of power so there's a little bit of a testing that happens around the 11 because a person realizes that they have an ability to be telepathic um, intuitive empathic etc and then the 22 is called the master builder and you happen to already be born on the 22nd and then potentially as one of the Ways that we could calculate your birth date can also be the 22. That's a lot of 22 energy. The 22 being a master builder means that one has progressed past the stage of the 11. They understand power. And now they're going to bring spiritual concepts into the physical plane here and manifest some kind of a project here that has a basis of spirituality to it. Now, you know, as I was saying earlier, um, it tends to attract a political space, um, CEOs, large organizations, international corporations, 22s can generally tend to be humanitarians. Now I'm naming the balanced benevolent use of the 22 on every single energy that I'm expressing here at any number has a huge spectrum of how it can be expressed here. 
from an underbalanced level to a balanced level to an overbalanced level. So, you know, as I was saying, a lot of corrupt politicians who understand that they're functioning actually on a on an occult level in the background, that's how they're using their spirituality. So, but the 22 is generally called a master builder and tends to progress through life learning from a lot of different areas until finally, as it's worn all these different hats, it puts something together into a big project here. Now, because of the fact that you also have then as your expression number, your name adds up to the one energy. It does come from a 19 one. And when your name or any number that ends up as a one comes from a 19, and when I'm saying this very quickly, the one and nine adds up to a 10, and then the one and zero is a one. So that's how a 19 becomes a one. So, sorry, sometimes I throw these terms out there fast, and I, I forget that maybe they need a little bit more of an explanation. Hugh, have you ever had your numerology done before? I should have asked. I have. I'm fascinated by the accuracy of uh, what numerology does for people, and I'd love to, <laughs> when you put my name on the Internet, you're going to see how accurate you were in everything you said so far. But I do have a friend, oh. too, I'd love, love to make you aware of. Uh, so if you have my number, I don't do the email or text thing, but I'd love to speak with you, and I think your skills are, need to come out more for people to uh, really take more personal responsibility by understanding through what you're able to tell them how to become more spiritual and helping each other in the world. Okay, very good. Wonderful news. Definitely we'll keep in touch and we will talk with you about that. So, yes, so I, what I find in when these different calculations here are worked out and the there is a 22 in the background of uh, a different calculation to receive it. And especially when you have the skills for the 22. So you came into this lifetime with a 22 life path, 22 skills as a master builder. You can build big and you have the one in your expression. You are a formidable direct person to the point. Bam, 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 bam. The the meaning that you have answers, you have um, techniques, uh, and especially in a business mind avenue, you are articulate in expressing that. It probably actually came somewhat easier for you. So um, more so I would say, that the difficulty that you may have experienced is who to trust to apply your skills with. If there has been any sort of a challenge with you in younger years in that respect, it was who to believe in that you felt would be a prominent place for you to put your energies into. And why I'm saying that is because as you have the 191 expression number, the 191, the 19 is the sun in the tarot. As it states per simply on paper, if it's in your expression number, it says that you have a karmic, they call it a debt, I call it a memory. A memory with having a choice of how to apply yourself into a project. And whether you were going to put this into a purposeful place that served you more or a purposeful place that served humanity more and making the decision in that. So you carried with from another lifetime that you were going to face in this lifetime those types of circumstances where you would be needing to make that decision as to what to choose. So you also, okay, well, actually, you know, it's the same thing. So you actually have, I looked in it with the same numbers. You have the same set of characteristics in your, you know, common name because there's no change in your name. 
What's interesting also is that your first name, Hugh, adds up to an 8, and then your last name adds up to an 11. So you come from a spiritual line of builders here. So in general, there's an archetype, there's um, an architecture type archetype to you. So when I'm tuned into your last name, there's um, an energy of building roads. There's a construction energy around you. So you are um, definitely someone who can construct and work with large organizations that are, would be putting together communities, for example. So there's, that's all within your choices. Um, I'm not picking up yet absolutely how you have expressed um, what avenues you've gone into. A whole lot of things are flashing all at once. Um, okay. But the, there's a lot that's been, one, you've probably had your hands in, two, um, you know, it comes from a family generational space uh, with your last name that has these connections. So there's a, a lot. Um, you're resonating a lot with. There is very interesting new information, which I'm going to be doing a series of shows on uh, how our history was altered. And previous to perhaps uh, a couple hundred years ago, we did have free energy there, our learning. And you feel a strong resonance with the architecture and actually road building. I keep feeling road building around you, whether that's metaphorical or physical. Um, there's a strong construction feel for you in designing and um, even in the level of understanding free energy. So uh, that we, we were experiencing free energy in the past. That's a long story. We'll, we'll talk about that in the upcoming shows. So there's a strong resonance with that. So strong leadership capabilities, the, your birth date being 922 and 1944, is then the subcomponents of 922 and 9. So that points to absolutely a very powerful completion lifetime for you here you are very much have philanthropist humanitarian in you and very solid structure your pinnacles are four four eight and four four and four solid 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 <laughs> so you have a lot of stability you've had a lot of stability around you uh the current time frame that you're in is the nine pinnacle. So you are in an overall cycle of time where, you know, you have an opportunity to make choices uh, for where you're going to put your energies and all those opportunities are going to be there for you. You now, if anything, I would say that maybe um, from the ages of 63 to 68, those five years, there's a little bit of a time frame in there uh, that you had to go through some challenging energies. Uh, probably that may have been some of that decision-making that was between what's better for me, what's better for the whole altogether. And not only, not, not just when I reference that in you making decisions for yourself, but you in looking at other people. So you, you probably from the ages of 63 to 67, which were um, the years 2008 approximately to 2013, went through a period of time where you you refined yourself in being able to make better business decisions and, and as to where you would put your time. You probably experienced some areas where you were involved with with any type of partnerships, relationships, experiences that weren't what you found were favorable and you learned a lot in that time frame. 
good good years, even though they may have been kind of difficult years at the same time. Went through a big breakthrough then, approximately a good partnership level, day 69 in the year 2014. You experienced stronger line of time all the way up through uh, age 75 there. Maybe some initial time from 70 to 72, little bit, little bit rocky emotional times, but not too bad, teetering. And um, there, you're a steady worker, that's for sure. <laughs> you have a, a lot of steady work ahead of you. Um, you so okay now. So here you are. You're you. So actually, let me bring us to because I was starting to talk to closer to where you're at right now. In 2019, I would say that at age 69, you started something new. Um, Whether it was a new health habit that you're doing or a new business project that you were in, initially for the first three years from 70 to age 72, you you were working through rocky past emotions a little bit. Whether that was in a business deal also might be even if something that you worked through with health but it brought you to a higher spiritual sense of yourself. Now, in the last three years, well, the last year and this year, you are in a better communication time for yourself. So you've cleared some levels. You've moved past some other spaces that you've worked through from the past. This year, 29, brings you to a little more philosophical introversion, Uh, collect your energies together, see where you're going, make some decisions, but it's a little bit of an introverted year in general. And next year, you'll spawn out a little bit more forward again. Uh, Moves into uh, age 76, year 2021 is a strong nine energy for you. So it is going to be a year definitely of a completion, always with a nine. A lot of nine energies here. Um, it says it says it's a winner. So there's a one energy on the spiritual plane. Um, whatever you're moving into, you're going to have a stronger surge of this business aspect forward. Um, at age 76. Now, after this, you do go under the 13-4. One of two things. It can be a situation where you may feel like you've placed yourself into too many different directions and the work is too heavy. On the other hand, you also could vibrate with that as 13 is the energy of high completion. So it is, it is the number of the 12 here with the one in the center. So it means that you move deeper into center. You have the five energy on the spiritual plane, which five means a lot of activity. So I'm going to say to you, in, at age 76, when you solidify something new there that you're working with, intent to the universe that the workload is gentle and comfortable. So if you have a tendency to work towards sometimes being a workaholic, you it's a good opportunity for you to allow the perfect scenario so that you don't tend to try and take too much on, but don't be afraid to put some of those responsibilities into a, a few more, trust, trust some other people around you. That Okay, that's ringing very true. So a little more trust. The 22s have a tendency to kind of have a difficult time assigning things to other people because, you know, I have a lot of 22 myself and we like to do it ourselves. But um, it's very good for you to assign. So trust your ability to choose management people well. Does that make sense? Cindy, all I did was basically say hello and give my birthday, and you already did a book on me. God bless you. That was absolutely accurate and fantastic, and I really would like to 
uh, shine your light more into the world too. I was married to an earth angel for 35 and a half years who blessed me with the lesson of unconditional love, which is what I say we all incarnate to learn. As we learn it, we're supposed to be a blessing to others, especially those who can't help themselves. So I've had quite a bizarre life, a lot of negative experiences, and some of what you were touching on uh, a few years back, I went through some very difficult things, but through it all, I always chose uh, uh, to make lemonade out of the lemons and go to a place of love and forgiveness. And that's the big work that I'm doing is actually empowering women and indigenous people globally as I root out corruption and transform global economics, education, politics, religion, and more based on new paradigms and strategies of spirituality and unconditional agape love, making everything ethical, moral, legal, and transparent. <laughs> the best summary ever. Indeed. Indeed. No wonder there were so many flashes in there. It was like boom, 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 boom. I'm like, okay, so, so where is the end? Yeah, He's all over I don't the know place. If you've, have you written any books yourself, Cindy? Because I, I, again, people keep begging me to write books, but that's, if I did that, it's like a grain of sand on the beach. Now, I have so much to give, so I'm looking to bring people and shine the light more on them than me. I mean, I'll step out with my stories, but it's as a way show or saying the stories aren't all about me and also Phoenix Rising, but about me showing you how my faith in God has seen me through some pretty bizarre life experiences, including UFO, paranormal, and near-death with ongoing paranormal. And to work in the government, I am a former a whistleblower. There's a front page Wall Street uh, Journal article with attachments that can be seen on the internet that I was written up yes. in. It triggered an investigation and eventually led to the resignation of Jim Wright from Speaker of the House in shame. I share common background with President Trump, but I'm not into the ego like he is. And my last name uh, has no recognition. Yes. Oh, precisely. Precisely. So that's even hence, yeah, having the 22 sort of hidden because, um, yes, it, it kind of keeps um, the people just doing those uh, first calculations on us. Um, they kind of, you know, look us over at first. You know? So some of well, us came I, I, in, you know, and, and hid a little bit. People have taken a lot of things yeah. from me, too, which is fine. It, <laughs> it shows me in well, the long run where they're coming from <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I understand exactly what you are saying exactly what you um, um, are meaning and I have some very also other interesting stories in the background to tell you yes uh, wonderful Hugh it's awesome to yeah, meet you just hold I'm on so to my glad. number because I don't use the uh, email or texting but even if you put my name on the internet you'll see all kinds of interviews and websites and uh, also check out the Twitter page. It, there's a pinned post related to my muse, Dame Nicole Brandon, who's probably one of the most talented people on the planet. And uh, again, my wife was such a precious gift to me who truly blessed me uh, with unconditional love. So it's in her memory. That I'm really looking Aww. to help. Uh, women and I've I've run into some women that were <laughs> I, I don't know I, very negative after uh, coming a month and a half after my wife died I almost died I'm also in the veterans healthcare system since 2008 so yeah I have a quite a, a whole it's a, each day is a miracle that's what people have to wake up to too that every choice that you make is manifesting your future. Uh, so be careful what you're choosing and saying in the present. Yes. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, for you hang on to my number. Give me a call. Here. I want to speak with you some more because I just I'm going to have my business partner post the show of where you, I came on with you because it's so accurate and absolutely phenomenal. You, you have a great gift. God bless you. Thank for that. you. Thank you. Very much appreciated. I wrote your number down, and I most certainly will have got it at 804-798-1139. We're, we're in. And um, I will definitely be talking with you, Hugh. Thank you. All right, and thank you again for everything you're doing. It's people helping people helping people and the chaos. Let go and let God what you can't handle. And don't fight with people. Don't argue. Nobody ever wins an argument, but bring forth solutions that are a benefit to others, and that will be a blessing. Yes, big amen.
Okay. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Bye bye. I'll let you finish up. Thank you now. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so um, actually, I do have uh, one more person on the line, a 770, and I actually will not have time to do one more reading, but um, hang in there, 770. Uh, uh, what I will do is I will, I'm going to uh, close out the show, and then 770, um, let me see. Uh, actually, let me get information from you before I close out because I'm not super familiar enough with the um, studio here on how to do this. Hello, 770. This is Cindy. How are you? Hi, Cindy. I'm good. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Uh, so yes, I just, I just tuned in. So um, That's okay. What we will do yeah. is um, I'm going to ask for your first name. And just give me your first name so far. M-A-T-T-I-E, Matty. Matty. Okay, Matty, um, would you be able to go on my Facebook page and uh, message me? And what I can do is um, I will arrange one of the free 20-minute online readings with you on a Zoom meeting or on a phone call with you. So you will still receive a reading just for coming in. Um, I just won't have the time to do it right now because I will be closing out the show because it will click off um, around the two-hour mark here, and we only have like about 13 minutes. I see. But I'm you, looking at the uh, uh, um, um, internet um, page now. It says it's only 13 minutes. So you say, you. let me get this clarity. You say go to your yes. Facebook page and message you. One of two things. You can either go to um, my website, which is thectechnique.com, and you'll find my email there to email me. And I have your first name, so just send you know a message to me at thectechnique at gmail.com that you are Maddie, and I will arrange a, um, an internet reading with you, an online reading with you, a 20-minute one like I would do was doing for everyone, and or uh, you can go to Cindy Magnuson, M-A-G-N-U-S-O-N, and on Facebook, friend me, um, and or just I even think you can send me a personal message and let me know how I can reach you, and then we will arrange a reading for you. Okay, Facebook or I I didn't get your email though. You said C the the C, the C dot, technique okay. T H E S E E technique T E C H N I Q U E at I got, Gmail. I got lost. C H E S Yeah, T H E S E E Technique, which is T E C H N I Q U E at technique, okay. G Gmail dot okay. com. And, that is and your just, email address. Yes, okay. and Maddie, you can go online and find this radio show, and underneath the description of the show is listed everything. You can just click on a link. And remember, you can list, re-listen to this archive show at any time. It will always be here. So you can go back on online to Blog Talk Radio and go to this show and hear it over again if you missed anything. But all of my contact information is underneath this link. Oh, this, yeah, um, I see. Online. Yeah, so you will see I it see there. I see it now, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, will, yes, well, there I, think you go. I will. I think I will email you. Okay. okay, perfect, dear. We, and I will be doing that in March, so I'll be getting back to you, you know, shortly to, to arrange that. So you're in. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Steve. I'm looking forward to working with you. Thank you, Maddie. Uh -huh. Okay. Have a great bye -bye. evening. Bye. Okay, thank you. Okay, everyone, so that's ending the show tonight. What a fun time. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's kind of interesting because for me, um, I've been doing numerology readings like this in the background for a long time. And I've been advertising that I do numerology readings and uh, on my Facebook page, but it just never really goes anywhere. So finally, I thought, I think what I need to do is sort of have people, um, you know, listen and understand what uh, I'm able to through the years of working with doing this for 20 years now and then studying many other diverse areas, um, how I can help people. And the reason that it comes through the way it does is because it is where my heart is. Um, and Hugh is asking and saying, you know, did you write a book? And basically um, how the events have moved through my life are that it seems that I'm going to sort of just be putting my book into the format of the radio shows. So a lot of the radio shows that I've been doing, which are all listed on my YouTube channel, which is Cindy Magnuson, M-A-G-N-U-S-O-N, and Cindy is C-I-N-D-Y. All of the past shows are in there. And I've kind of had themes in there that are significant to me, and I'm going to continue with themes that are significant. And a lot of what I've released in, in those shows are what I would have put into a book. But as these shows began, didn't seem that there was going to be time in my personal life to sit down and write a book. Spirit just said, let it go. Trust and let it go. Let it go out there. Give those tips and puzzle pieces that you've worked and at and found and offer them to people instead of trying to hold them onto my in, in inside and then wait to put into a book and that that would be um, beneficial and it was what I was supposed to do. So I let go of trying to hold on and um, the shows have continued to bless me back with meeting beautiful people all over the world. Um, so for me to be in this space and be able to offer this energy, these readings, and this help is where my heart is. So thank you all very much. I'm going to be saying good night. What I'm um, thinking of putting together for the next show is going to be on emotional freedom technique. So some of what I was going through working with tonight moved into that place of where once we find an energy conflict, how can I work with someone then to have them shift their energy field and move out of that past and into the present here and feel secure in the present and not be responding from habit or from past energies that are still holding them in certain response levels. So I'm considering that maybe my next show is going to be on my emotional freedom technique sessions. And then again, I would also up, open up the line and do EFT sessions online, similar to how we did tonight. After that, then I'm going to possibly run, I am going to run it, I'm not sure how long it's going to be, but a show series that's going to go between two and three months long on the altered histories in time. There have been definitely alterations done that caused us to think and act differently in time. And a lot of those false histories are being exposed. And I have already secured four very prominent people. I'm going to surprise everyone with their names. I'm, I'm trying to get together some uh, additional names to be on. Um, people who have worked hard at looking up and putting together the information around the world that says that we need to reconsider a great portion of what we consider our history to be. And that's going to free us from some of the limiting beliefs that we have that are, in a sense, keeping us from evolving into even greater states of ourselves. 
So with that, I thank you all for joining me tonight. I wish you all a beautiful and blessed week. And I will see you next week then. So goodbye to all. Love you.